Hey, it's me Erin, and today we're going to dive into the topic that I rarely discuss here on my channel because it's not really something that I have a say in anyway, but um, well, that's what we're going to do today. So without further ado, I'm going to head on straight to the point. So today's TV show that we're going to talk about is The Scum France, which is uh, the remake by the country of France of the popular well, at some time it was really popular Norwegian TV show which is called Scam, which is translated uh, to English language as Shame. It has a lot of remakes around the countries. The French one was the first one to make a remake of the story. And it's kind of weird if you think of it, like, you know, every country repeats the same storyline and what's new in it, why people keep watching the remakes of it instead of watching the original one. Well, I'm going to tell you that it's kind of different from remake to remake, so they adapt it to the cultural uh, nuances, the cultural, you know, differences, and that's why it's different for every country, that's why people are interested in seeing the same story happen in different surroundings, in different settings. So The Scum Friends is my favorite remake by far, and, uh, well, not gonna lie, it's one of the two that I watched at all. So it's actually pretty successful, it has got two of its original seasons and also it has got two more right now which are not out yet so i love it i watched all six seasons of it the four of the remake one and two original ones so our topic under discussion today is the season six of this very tv series which kind of led me a little bit disappointed and i'm sure that i'm not one left with this feeling. But before we go on into the season six and my problems with it and why I think that it should have ended differently, I would like to put a disclaimer over there that I love this TV show, absolutely love it, it's my favorite one of all, and um, many moments of the last original two seasons I liked very much, and about the season six as well, I liked many moments and I like the characters and I liked, you know, the approach they took with it because otherwise I wouldn't have watched it, you know. But still, I feel quite a bit off by the ending of this story and I feel like it should have taken different approach to that. So in order to understand what went wrong, we need to go into the TV show and see the author's approach into that before we can, you know, shame it and say what's wrong with it. So, in case you haven't watched this uh, very season or and you're planning to watch it, beware, there are going to be a lot of spoilers in here. And um, if you're interested to check it out yourself, go check it out, turn off the video, because there's going to be a lot of spoilers. As the season starts, we are introduced to Lola, which is the sister of Daphne, one of the main characters of the show. Straight from this first scene, we get this vibe of the season that is going to be depressive and uh, problematic in many ways. When we see Lola uh, finding out that her mother actually died not so long ago, and Daphne is calling her about that, and Lola is, you know, screaming at the top of the roof in devastation. Then, moments later, we're introduced to Lola's psychiatrist, and we kind of get an inside look into her problems and uh, the addiction she's dealing with. Later on we find out that she has a drug addiction, she has alcohol addiction, and she's actually struggling with depression. Later on we see other characters of their family, such as uh, the father of the family, which is actually, as we later find out, only Daphne's father and not Lola's biological father. So, so her mom actually cheated on Thierry with another guy and then Lola was born and she's actually a stepdaughter of Thierry and that's what we find out. Next we see the relationship, the difficult relationship between Daphne and Lola and how they struggle to find any understanding with each other because they see the world differently and like they have different attitude towards their uh, now deceased mother and uh, to their well dad and to other people and we see this conflict ongoing conflict between them we're introduced to other characters throughout the season but the point is that we see that lola struggles to find the understanding with the outside world and this is what i feel like they were trying to point out that she doesn't really have friends that she doesn't really have support she well sleeps around she doesn't really have uh love she doesn't really have support in anything and she kind of struggles throughout this first part of the season. While this is all happening, she gets introduced to Elliot, which is Luca's uh, boyfriend, 
from the season 3, if you remember him. Obviously you do, everyone does. Later on in the season, they kind of share this deeper understanding, deeper connection, I would say. And they kind of become friends on a different level, which I honestly liked this dynamic between them two, because Elliot is also problematic in some way. Elliot is also struggling with mental illnesses, and Elliot is also, you know, in some way he's an outcast like Lola. And that's where they find, you know, similarities between themselves. And that's why they want to be friends with each other, because they are kind of similar in this kind of way. Also, Lola gets introduced to a company of friends, which are Joe, Max, Seku, and most importantly, Maya. So she gets introduced to them through this girl, Maya, and later on, they share love with each other. They develop a love story between themselves. So while this is all happening, we see the development of Lola in this kind of way that she finds friends eventually, she shares this connection between her and Elliot, and uh, she's developing to get to be become a better person. So she obviously has struggling moments, like that moment with her old friend uh, when she was, you know, sharing drugs with him and then uh, he wanted to you know force himself in onto her and then she called Elliot and she he saved him, him I think this is like very very intense but at the same time very like strong moment in this kind of sense then also she gets deeper and deeper into this company of uh, the Joe Max and Seku and Maya which is later on called Lamifex and while this is all happening, she starts to develop her feelings uh, towards Maya, and Maya does that as well. And they share a couple of cute moments together, and later Maya finds out that Lola actually suffers from addiction, from, and she has a lot of, you know, mental issues and problems. And then she kind of starts, you know, going backwards from Lola from that point. Then they kind of go back into being good friends, I would say. Then Maya gets a date, Lola gets jealous, Lola says that she loves Maya, and Maya doesn't say anything, and then we see that Lola is struggling again, like she, 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 she thought that she found love, but she actually didn't. Then Elliot comes in, and he suggests that Lola would star in his own movie, which is called Lux and Obscure, I believe. And this is some project for Elliot, and this is very important for him, obviously. And he invites Lola into this project, and he thinks that she'll do good, so she thinks a little bit, and then she agrees. Also, throughout the season, we find out that Daphne is actually struggling with eating disorder, which is kind of briefly shown in there, I would say. I do think that they should have put way more attention into this problem if they, you know, expose this in some kind of way. And then we get into the filming process, which is very beautiful, looks very good. And um, then the last moment, Lola has to kiss Elliot for this movie. And she can't do that and she can't say I love you because she admits that she never said it to anybody. Then Maya comes in, um, Elliot says, okay, okay, we will do that, and Maya stands uh, near Lola, and Lola succeeds, and she says, I love you, and then she kisses Elliot, and the movie is basically, you know, over at this point. <laughs> this is, we are at episode 7 already, so during this episode, uh, then later on, Maya admits her feelings to Lola, finally, and she says that she has an addiction in the eyes of um, Lola, and they kiss, and they, you know make love together and they are happy eventually. So that would be great to this point. I think I forgave <laughs> all the, you know, some small, you know, moments that felt, well, bad to me. After this moment, you know, it's kind of logical, like, you know, happy end, love wins, whatever. But then what happens next? We have like three episodes left, uh, bear in mind that. And everything seems to be getting normal, you know, Lola doesn't, you know, really shows any, show any signs of uh, problems and everything is fine. And then she kind of remembers about her biological dad. And she struggles to understand who he is, what, what he's like, and she thinks that, you know, he will want to meet her, she will, he will want to, you know, 
talk to her at least. Then she has this uh, small interaction with Thierry. So he talks to Lola and about this entire situation with uh, her mother and he says something like I wouldn't let this small problem ruin our relationship which he refers to Lola, her being pregnant with Lola from another man. So then Lola gets upset obviously and she says some bad things to Thierry and she he hits her in, in return. And then Lola runs away to find her biological dad. When she does that, she sees that he has a family and he's fine by his own. They have this share small interaction where he says that he doesn't want it anymore. Like he, she can talk to her mother, which is, as we know, dead, but he doesn't know that. And he doesn't want to, you know, deal with that anymore. So just he gives her money and leaves her as that. So on the street, which is kind of dramatic. Like I felt like it, it was really, really like well set, but, um, after that, after that, things go down, 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 down. So Lola gets into the nightclub, she drinks again, she does drugs again, and then she calls no one else but Elliot. I remind you that she's dating Maya at this point, so where's she at, <laughs> you know? So she calls Elliot, he comes and uh, she offers him a drink, which as far as you may know, like people that suffer from mental illnesses and that are on some certain meds, they should not mix it with alcohol in any way. So Elliot refuses at first, but then um, Lola says, no, come on, come on. They, they are not the ones to tell us not to do that. So she basically, she basically wants Elliot to get drunk with her. So they get drunk. Um, then she does some dirty stuff, then Elliot tries to save her, and then uh, he, as far as I understood, he suffered a depressive phase of his, um, well, bipolar disorder, disorder after that happened. But nobody knows, nobody can, you know, say that it's true or not, but, like, obviously he was real drunk, it wasn't really good. Then he comes home, uh, she feels uh, the blame, then she wants to say sorry to the Lucas, and he says that she's no longer allowed to see Elliot anymore because she only hurts him and she uh, does bad to him, so she better do bad to herself only. After that happens, she breaks up with Maya, which we haven't seen the past episode, like, not at all, like, they, come on, they only started dating, and they haven't, like, talked to each other, they, nothing happened, really, nothing happened, I know that this is, the love isn't the topic of the season, but come on, they really didn't even talk to each other, how come, how come? Then she breaks up with Maya, saying that she's toxic, and she only hurts her, and she will continue to hurt her. Maya just tries to say something in re response, but then she just leaves with no words said. Okay, we'll go back to this situation again, but just it seems so fake to me. And after all that happens, we see we're in, on episode nine already, nine and a half, I believe, and we have like one and a half episodes left. So we see Lola going down for all this time. From all these spots. So she has a small talk with Daphne before the final episode and Daphne says that you're a strong person, I love you, you're a stronger person, the strongest person of all and how are you doing? And Lola obviously sitting there all destroyed and devastated but she doesn't try to not to show it. So Daphne leaves and Lola leaves as well so she leaves her keys behind, she takes her bag, takes some money, I believe, yeah, and she goes on to somewhere we don't know yet so Daphne rushes back home she finds a note uh, saying I'm sorry from Lola then she shares it with her dad they start looking for her and now we see this from kind of like a perspective of Daphne in this kind of sense so then she comes to the Lucas and Elliot's house she kind of invites herself into this house without saying nothing and she's looking for his sister, she's really worried, and she asks uh, Elliot if uh, he can help, asks Lucas if he can help. They both comfort her, try to, you know, make it, you know, somewhat easier and better. 
But then, ha, huh, forgotten storyline. Uh, Lola was actually talking to someone named Benny Taxi uh, via Instagram direct. So she was sending him messages. They were talking. They were, you know, sharing something with each other. And then we find out that Benny Taxi was actually Daphne all time long all this time. So as we find out about that, Lola texts Benny the last text, like, it was nice to seeing you, it was good, now it's all over, something like that. And then he, she deletes his account. Next off, uh, Daphne finds the photo in their direct messaging uh, from Lola, and where she says that, you know, it's her beautiful, it's, your, it's her favorite place, it's really nice. And um, Elliot says, conveniently enough that he knows where he where it is and they go there they go there to find lola and da 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 da, da. obviously they find her and everything is okay she's not dead she has not committed suicide nothing nothing like that so then they talk it's actually a really nice moment i liked it although i was kind of a little bit disappointed by how it all turned out but this dialogue between them that they shared about benny taxi about how daphne wanted to get close to lola and that she was her sister and nothing could get between in between them not even the fact that uh, they did not share the same dad and whatever and she was still her little sister and she loved her as as much as she could so then they share this talk they both cry and then everybody starts to say sorry to lola lola starts saying sorry to everybody and we kind of get this glimpse of the ending of the story of everybody like my and lola they get back together and it's in this kind of weird supermarket way, which is kind of nice, but in the whole story, it's... Okay, we, we will see, we will see, right? In the last moment, uh, they all get invited into the movie that Elliot has made, and he shows everybody this movie, and we see everybody, you know, all the characters from previous seasons, they get together, they watch this movie, and they share those moments with each other, and Lola and Maya kiss, and that is how... The season ends so let's get into roasting it <laughs> i guess so the points that i actually liked about this season despite everything from episode one to seven it was the development of lola which i kind of enjoyed because i saw how she really changed from this person who didn't trust anybody who was you know cautious whatever with everybody didn't really know what love means and you know she's problematic she's troubled and we kind of see this development of her like getting better and better and better but, um, yeah, well, it, it was just the problem of me was that if they wanted to show this development, it should have happened then to the middle of the season, as we saw, like, all good things were happening. And then we would see the downfall, which would be, you know, realistic, as in every situation. We, we live in the real world, you know, people, people do bad things sometimes. People don't know what to do sometimes. And Lola is a teenager. She doesn't really know much about the world itself. So... If it was to the, you know, middle of the season, like episode five or somewhere, uh, and then it would go down, and then it would go up again, that would be kind of logical, you know. But as we see it to th all throughout this episode seven, the end of episode seven, and we have like two episodes to see the downfall and the rise, it's kind of rushed. I feel like it's kind of rushed. Another point I loved is the addiction itself, how they showed it, no way they were normalizing it, they showed it, maybe not in the, the very realistic way, maybe they didn't show all the points, but you saw how it sucks to be addict, to be an addict, you know, like, they showed all the, you know, not maybe all the bad sides, but they showed that this is not good, this is not, you know, cool, and all the situation that Lola getting got into because of uh she wanted to you know do drugs at some point she was fucked after that so you know it kind of shows that it's bad and i honestly enjoyed the way they portrayed it also i really enjoyed lola and elliot's friendship despite <laughs> everything that everybody else says i remember before the season began uh there was a speculation about that uh, Lola was going to be next Elliot's girlfriend and they were going to break up with Lucas and whatever and obviously that was not going to happen but everybody was so afraid when they saw them two together where they were like okay fuck like they are going to get together they're going to fuck they're going to whatever but no 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 it was like cool friendship like mentor mentee kind of moment because you know Elliot was kind of 
you know, somebody who showed Lola how things can be differently, different, you know, from where they are. Because Elliot also struggles with some problems. Elliot also has problems. And he shows Lola that, you know, the change is possible. And I loved it. I loved their dynamic. I loved their chemistry between those two. And it was on, oh, honestly really nice. So also I liked uh, Daphne and Lola's talk on the roof where the, the last scene... It was kind of touching to me because I saw their development throughout the series. Like, they kind of uh, realized, you know, worked out their problems kind of fast throughout the season. I would say season, like uh, the third or the fourth episode, they were kind of fine already. And then she was nothing but supporting Lola. And Lola was trying to support Daphne. And like their sister to sister dynamic, I think it was shown pretty good. So points that I disliked now. I think straight from the episode 7, there were no good reason for Lola to go that way downhill again. Like, you know, I understand it was her problem with her biological father. She didn't really know. She didn't really have real family. She didn't really know her father. She wanted to know. She thought it was going to be different. She had some expectations towards that. But hear me out. She had so much support throughout everyone, like from everyone, from her sister, from Elliot, from uh, her group of friends, from Maya, which we didn't see, but we'll get into that again. From basically most of the people, you know, the Thierry, he was, he was, he was a dick to her at the first, at first, but then he was getting, you know, nice to her, and like, I didn't really feel it. You know, maybe they should have shown it to me differently. Maybe that way I would feel it. But then I saw it. I was like, why would you go there, first of all? Then when I saw what happened there, I was like, okay, well, okay, that's fucked. But then she went so way, like all the way down because her biological father rejected her. What did you expect? Did you expect open arms? I don't know. Did you expect something else? But maybe it's like she thought of that. It was a nice, naive dream of her. But I really don't believe that many things happen this way. So I don't know. I didn't feel it. I didn't feel it real much. So next point I disagree with is Maya and Lola's relationship. They like almost don't care about each other. Like Lola, I believe that she has feelings for Maya. Maya? I don't know, like, first episodes when Maya was showing, like, signs of attraction towards Lola, it was fun. It was fun to see. Like, they kind of were curious about each other, you know? Then, um, sorry, uh, when... It doesn't make sense to me. Like, first of all, um, Lola opens up about her addiction. Maya ignores her. Okay, whatever. It was overwhelming. Then Maya goes back to Lola and she says... Okay, I actually miss you. Will we, you know, hug? Will we be friends? Is it okay? Lola says, uh, yeah, okay, cool. And they have kind of this warm and cool moment. Then Maya gets a girlfriend. And they start dating. Something doesn't add up here. And then Lola, Lola admits her feelings towards Maya and Maya runs away. And, and she rejects her all the way through. But then, then, for some reason, in episode 7, she goes back to help, kind of. Then she hears all this stuff from Lola, for the film, obviously, but whatever. And then she says that you are my addiction and they kiss and whatever. Then, again, two episodes left. Two episodes left. No actual relationship between them happens. Nothing. They don't text each other, they don't talk to each other, they don't see each other. Maybe a couple of comments in Instagram, whatever. It doesn't look like real relationship. When, when Lola breaks up with Maya before committing, you know, what she was going to commit. No reaction, she just went away. It was, I don't know what problem was it, like was it the bad writing, was it the bad acting, I don't know. But I didn't feel it, you know, I, I just... I just didn't, you know? Another point that I didn't like is how fast everything was fixed after the, you know, the attempt of suicide that Lola was going to commit. And the conveniences of this attempt uh, as, as, you, as well. Like, when Elliot knew for some reason where, where this place was, you know, like, for some reason this was the only place. And they picked the exact place. There were a lot of photos 
in there, you know, like in their, you know, conversation with Benny Taxi. Why did they pick the exact same one where Lola was? Then Elliot somehow knew where it was. Why Daphne went to Lucas and uh, Elliot instead of going to Lamifex or somewhere or to Maya? But she, she mentioned that she went there. But still, it's like weird that they had the chance to save her, which which kind of we'll get into that a little bit later, but isn't it like really weird? Like how how it was all about the realness, but now it's not real at all, like whatsoever, you know? It's weird. It's weird. So another point that I didn't like, the last one probably, is how the final goodbyes to the old characters were said. So it was kind of like a rushed happy ending, I would say. And considering that they knew at the time that they this was the last season of it and this was a big, big finale, it was definitely not enough goodbye moments. You know, like we had this last, very, very last, you know, um, piece of, uh, you know, episode of cons consisting of six, seven minutes somewhere where they were just a little bit mentioning every single character, like a little bit, just a little bit. And it was so not much, you know, I would, I would get like maybe not every piece for every character, but at least a little bit more time. They just actually said a couple of words and that was all, that was it. And we spent most of this time, you know, uh, forgiving Lola for everything. And actually I didn't mention, but she, uh, admitted that she wants to go, you know, to the rehab once again. And it was definitely a really rushed happy ending. Like, just, uh, it was all in episode 10. And just like that, in the beginning of the episode, we see how Lola wants to commit suicide. She's all, all in, in there. All, all, like, down in there. And she's, uh, sad and she's devastated. But then, a couple of moments later, uh, we see that she's all happy and good and everything is fine and she like wants to go to rehab and whatever everybody's happy like I don't buy it you know I don't believe it simply so I believe what should have happened is that they should have put more dramatic moments in the story throughout the season we feel this depressive vibe of the show you know we feel this you know helpless situation and how Lola gets support from everywhere, but she is clearly reluct reluctant to, you know, getting it and, uh, you know, using it at some point. And even though halfway through the season, and even a little bit more, it was in episode 7, she feels safe, she feels loved, she feels accepted. She breaks down again due to the situation with her biological father. So then she has this moment with Elliot where she offers him a drink and in the bar and she clearly doesn't really feel how, doesn't really, you know, see the good things in her life because of this one bad thing and she focuses on bad thing instead of the good thing. And we kind of like are forced to think that everything is fucked again and everything is really bad, although most of her surroundings are clearly for her. But we don't, we don't see it. We, she doesn't see it again. And then she attempts to commit suicide. Well, I do know that for conference that would be too dark to get the main character killed. And I don't think that they would go for it. And then the message wouldn't be clear. Like, oh, what are you going to do if you have troubles? Just kill yourself and you will do good. Like, obviously, they should have a lesson for, you know, every season, and they should have a message in every season. But um, I do feel that w that would be kind of unexpected, but that would be something that I would love to see. That's obviously not something that I would that I would like anybody to go through. And the, the character of Lola, I love her. I wouldn't love to her to get killed because she, you know, she's not my favorite. But because I think that would be a power move of the show, you know? I feel like the whole depressive mood of the show, like all the good things that they've showed us and then this tragic downfall, if they went for it, actually, like if they went for this downfall, if they went straight into downfall and, you know, if they showed that she committed suicide, she succeeded, she killed herself and um, other characters were obviously really like struggling to understand what's going on. And then we would do, I don't know, maybe some time jump or whatever. And we would see the final goodbye to all the characters. Like, 
that would be something that I feel like would be powerful, really, really sad, really, really, like, out of place, maybe. But that didn't happen. And um, I, I don't think that they would do that, but I would like to see it as the viewer of this TV show. So if Lola actually succeeds in her suicidal attempt, we see how helpless the situation really was. She had all the support she needed, she had people that support her, she, she had the girl that loved her, but she would do that regardless. But why? Because the reality is that not everybody can be saved. It's depressive and dark, but it's the truth. People kill themselves, people feel helpless, people can't do it anymore. And there is not only always enough uh, of a good, you know, talk and calming talk and uh, hug and tea. It's very dramatic, but it's real in this sense. And this is what's come used to be about, about real situations with real people. But otherwise, we see Lola is this angry, ignorant teenager that just wants attention from everywhere. And she, she gets the support, but she rejects it. <clears throat> and then she uh, goes into committing suicide, but then everybody co is, uh, you know, forgiving her instantly. But it kind of shows that, you know, you can try to commit suicide and everybody would, t would, would go up to you and say sorry and everything will be fine if you do that, which is also not such a clear message to me. I get it that they wanted to do a legit wrap up of the season, you know, and they wanted to, you know, end it right there. And that would be impossible to do if the main character of the TV show died. But instead we got this rose-colored glasses ending where everybody f is forgiving Lola instantly and she doesn't get to, you know, redeem herself. She, she doesn't, you know, she, she doesn't have to do anything basically. She, she just, she went in with this attempt, didn't, it didn't go well. Uh, she got saved and yeah, she was fine. Everybody forgave her. What kind of message does it show us? And I'm not saying that I hate Lola and I want her to die and that's why I'm bragging about that. I grew my own love for her episode by episode. I saw her struggles, I saw her downfalls, I saw good moments in her. And I literally grew my love for her and I loved her. But that doesn't mean that I find it logical that she got saved out of this situation that she was in. You know, like, I would be fine if they had the happy ending at the, se at the episode 7 or somewhere, and maybe something from there. But, like, how rushed it was from that point, from, like, the episode 7, again, I'm saying that if they had this moment in episode 5, for example, and we had seen this downfall, and we would have gradually seen Lola improve the last three episodes, maybe, that would be really logical. That that would be it for me. But we didn't we didn't see it. We had like two episodes and one of them is Lola going from I want to die, nobody loves me, to okay, I'm loved, everything is good. I don't get it. It's like the character development went good, 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 good. Okay, okay, we are fucked. Nothing nothing is changed right now to, okay, I'm good again, everything is fine, I just lost myself. Don't get it, don't get it, just don't get it. And this message of the season would be really dark, but it would be something like, look around yourself, try, try, at least try to focus on the good stuff, try to see others around you, you know, get help, uh, don't ignore it. Don't ignore the support of others. Believe in other people around you. Believe that they might do what, what, what they, they might have good intents, not only bad ones. Or if you don't do that, you might end up in the same place as this character was. So it might have been the really, you know, brutal ending for the story and it might have been really, really bad look of the story. But I do believe that this message, I would cry my ass off watching this, but I would feel it with my entire heart. I would feel it and this would seem really, you know, put through. 
this would seem really, really logical to me. Like, yeah, people die. You know, people get killed. People, people commit suicide, you know. And it's good that we talk about that. It's, co it's good that we see the problems. It's good that they show that it's not enough only to, you know, uh, say I love you and just a hug and a kiss and whatever. It's good that they show it, but if they went a little bit farther with that and they showed how helpless it can be in situation, maybe stupid people saying like, okay, just fine, just, you know, um, look around yourself, focus on good stuff, just smile, don't be depressed, don't be sad, whatever. Uh, like, they would understand that this actually is real and this is a problem and this would be a powerful message. Well, what can I say in the end about all that? Um, if you are in any type of situation like that, if you feel in any way the same way, remember that the help is out there and remember that you're not alone in this situation. Remember that you can reach out for help. There are different services that you can call. There are different, you know, phone numbers. The people around yourself, they can help you as well. And if you feel this type of way, if you do believe that you have nobody to text, nobody to talk to, you can text me. If you feel like it, you know, my DMs in Twitter are open, my links, you know, the link you can find in the description. And we can talk, you know, we, me and you, we can talk. You, you can talk to other people, no problem. And just, just see how much you actually mean. You matter, you, you do matter. Don't think that you're alone. Don't think that nobody needs you. People need you, actually. You know? There is someone out there who is thinking, okay, how is he? How is she? How are they doing? You know? Just focus on that. I guess we're going to end here. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. It's kind of different content for my channel, but if you enjoyed it, feel free to subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time. Right now that I've stopped making thumbnail, it's time to go in it head on. All right.